Hello everyone, Dusty here with another tutorial. Today I am in the Elgato Game Capture software, going to be showing you guys how to record or capture your um, console gameplay footage, whether you're on a Nintendo Switch, a PS4, Xbox One, or even an older system like the Wii or Wii U or Xbox 360. If it can plug in via an HDMI, it is more than likely going to be compatible with one of the capture cards that you're using. And it really doesn't matter if you're using the HD60, the HD60, if you have a inboard card in your PC or if you're using an external card uh, like the HD60 or HD60S. It really doesn't matter. If you have downloaded the Elgato Game Capture software, which you're seeing right now on my screen, you are going to be able to record your gameplay footage to repurpose for YouTube, Facebook, wherever you want to publish your gameplay to. Now, this is also a software that is used to live stream and to be used as a source uh, to use with OBS or Streamlabs OBS. If you want a tutorial on how to do that, please let me know in the comments section below and I'll have that one coming out very, very shortly. So let's talk about getting that gameplay footage, setting the software up to make sure you're optimizing it and getting the best quality footage that you possibly can. So once you've downloaded the software, it's very simple. Open up a browser, Google Elgato uh, game capture software. It'll be the first one there. Download it. It's completely free. Make sure you download it for your appropriate platform. And then once you do open up the a software and you're going to see this here now if you want to know how to connect your console to the card to get it to show up in the software Elgato has already done some really quick really good tutorials on how to do that I'll link them down below uh, all of them are console specific so you'll be able to go to them quickly but basically you're going out of the output of the console into the cart I'm not going to talk about it here you can click the link below to, to check that out I just want to show you how to capture the gameplay footage that way you can repurpose it for whatever you want to so once you've connected the console and you have an active um, uh, you can see the actual console here in the hub on the Elgato capture screen here then you know you're ready to get started over on the right hand side is where all of the magic is going to happen there's a couple of cogwheels that will be uh, where you talk about the settings this cogwheel in the upper right hand corner this is actually the game capture the software itself this is like the overall settings and then I'll show you console specific here in a minute so the one we're going to want to look at today is the one that says capture and sharing so under capture library location file export and screenshot location basically when you do anything within the elgato capture software this is going to be the folder on your pc on your computer to where they save the file to so when we capture a piece of gameplay, it's going to be saved right here. The export location is going to be in my C drive under users, under dusty, under videos. Now we can change that by clicking this button here. And then basically, let's say I want it to be on my desktop, click the desktop there and then hit select folder. And now whenever I export from the Elgato capture software, it's going to go directly to my desktop. And if you ever want to reset any defaults, it's down here in the lower left hand corner. Last tab that I want you to go to is the next one here. It's called sharing. Uh, sharing allows you to share directly to specific platforms. I rarely ever do that. The one that I normally do is I export to a file or an MP4 on my PC. That way I can go and edit that within Premiere Pro or whatever video editing software that you're going to be editing for your gameplay. Now, not only can you capture console, but you can also get iOS and Android and different things like that. Uh, and so with that being said, this is not the tutorial for that. Okay. That's going to be another day, another time. So this is going to be your export options here. I would leave all of this the same here. The only other thing that you may want to take a look at is uh, where it says always convert new videos to MP4 file. I leave that checked because I like to work with MP4 files. Maybe you're different than me. I'm not sure. Uh, and then it says mix the following tracks to export. So what I like to do here is I like to go to export to separate files. I actually like to export separately my webcam, my live commentary audio, and the uh, sound coming from the game, coming from the capture card. Now, you can choose to put it all into one video and then separate it later in your e video editor of choice. But again, I like to split those up separately here, but I'm gonna leave those unchecked for the purposes of this video. Click OK once you've kind of tinkered around with those settings and you have them the way that you want. If you see the console right here, as you can see, I have the homepage open on my 
Xbox One. And now you can see as I am doing and interacting with my console, you can see there's a little bit of lag there, but it really won't matter in gameplay because you can overdub the audio and the audio is going to be synced up. So don't really worry about that. But as you can see, as I interact with my console, it is mirroring exactly what I'm doing on my console. That's exactly what we wanted to do. In order to set up the actual settings per console, like right now on my office desk here, I have the PS4, the Nintendo Switch, as well as the Xbox One. I have them going into an HDMI splitter. But basically, I can plug any of them into my Elgato capture card and have any of them recorded here on the software. So it's not just an Xbox or a PlayStation. You can do any of the consoles as long as you figure out how to get them piped into the system. Now, the other gear icon right here where it says device. So you're going to see device here. And as you can see, Game Capture HD, that's the card that I'm using. This is an older card. Uh, you're going to see here that it says 1080p 30. That's going to be kind of the quality of the footage that we're getting. But if we click on the gear icon here under device, you're going to see here now that I have this set up. The input device is PlayStation 4. I did that on purpose because I want to show you how to change that. So basically here where it says input device, you're going to want to hit that drop down menu and you can see all of the different things that you can begin to capture. I'm changing this over to an Xbox One. Uh, once you have the correct console selected up here, maybe take a look up here where it says input 1920 by 1080. That's what's going into the system and then output. This is whenever you export the gameplay. It's going to be in 1080p and 29 or you know 30 frames per second. Okay, that's again very simple. There, audio is going to be 224 um, AAC. I'd leave all of that the same. Uh, once you are done with that, you can take a look down here below. The quality that I have mine set at is right in between good or better. I can increase that up to say I want it to be a little better quality. And as you can see behind me here, that's going to go ahead and increase the quality that I get coming out of the export when I export the video. All of this is going to depend on how stout your PC is, um, the, the HDMI cables that you're using. There's a lot of stuff that could go into this, but I, on a base level, I would leave the profile set to HD 1080, allow 60 FPS if possible, and then once you're good there, hit OK. Again, if you mess up, if something gets wonky, click the reset defaults here. It'll take you right back to square one. Click OK. That's how you go in. And for every device, I recommend you click that gear icon and go in and take care of it. The next tab here is live streaming. Again, if y'all want to see that video, put that in the comment below. I'll take a look at that if that's something you want. The game audio. This is the audio piping from the console itself. I have found that leaving this between 60 and 75 is about the sweet spot. Again, it's going to be a little different for uh, actual recording and capturing as opposed to streaming when you're doing constant live commentary. I would leave this right around 60, but you can play around with it, see what works best for you. Uh, again, if you export these at separate tracks, like I showed you earlier, you're able to adjust them in post anyway, so it really doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that they're not peaking. Uh, so as you can tell here, um, down below here, live commentary, if I unmute that, you're going to be able to see here that I am using my Focusrite USB audio. This is my microphone of choice, so when I start recording, you are going to see that, boom, this little guy here is going going to go up in the yellow, hopefully. I leave that at 50 and then adjust that. Live commentary is going to be whatever microphone you want to use to overdub on top of the gameplay. If you are like me, I record externally in a different piece of software called Adobe Audition. And again, I have tutorials on that if that's something you're interested in. But more than likely, you're going to want to select your microphone here from the drop down menu. I'm using a Scarlett 2i2 audio interface. You may be using a Blue Yeti microphone. Whatever the case may be, you want to make sure that boom, it is in the drop down menu and you have the correct one selected. Now, if you hit the actual gear icon here, you can see that the threshold and the, um, this little guy here is a little different. The threshold's going to allow you to eliminate some of that background noise. I would leave it right at um, negative 36 dBs. Maybe take it down even to, uh, to maybe negative 40. That's up to you. It depends on, again, what kind of external noise you have in your recording space. Uh, next is going to be the Elgato sound capture. I would not mess with any of this. This is something that, again, you can tweak around with, but I would not recommend it at this time. Uh, next is going to be tags. Really, this is just for you to keep track of your videos. You can just say, you know, whatever this is going to be, say Xbox One Capture, whatever you want to call it, uh, the name of the game. This is for your purposes of kind of categorizing uh, uh, you know, cataloging the video if you're recording a bunch of different Let's Play series or a bunch of different uh, accumulation of gameplay. This is basically for you here. Once you have all of this set up here, you 
you are ready to roll. You are ready to hit that record button. In the lower left-hand corner, you're going to see the big red start recording button here. Click that guy there. And then as you can see, now whatever I do on the console is going to be mirrored again, like I just told you there. Obviously, I'm not in an actual game uh, because I did want to kind of show you guys the different uh ways it would work and I thought this would play better on the actual tutorial. So as you can see there, that record button is going to be spinning from the right to left. That's how you know that it's being recorded. Also in the center of the screen there, you're going to see how many seconds have elapsed since you've hit that record button. If you're trying to keep your gameplay to a certain length, you can do that and keep track of that by the center icon there on the screen. And again, everything should be working the way you want it to work. If something over here is not working the way it should, you need to make sure you stop the recording and go back and tweak. Now, I'm just recording gameplay. If I want to record commentary, I click this little button here, and as you can see now, my microphone is starting to peak, and I would need to go here and actually adjust this up some, as you can see, and now the commentary is starting to go in. That is how you record it. Now, once you're done, hit the record button once more, and you're going to think to yourself, well, where did it go? Well, remember earlier when I showed you those folders where it's going to export to? That's where it went. But... Elgato makes it very easy. This tab here next to capture says edit. If I click on edit, we are now going to see that actual footage that I just recorded. So if I press the play button here, as you can see, it's going to go here and it's just like a timeline in any other video editor. As you can see, everything that I've done on that screen is going to show up right here on this video. Uh, something I like to do is I just like to grab the actual video file, which is over here under video. So if I make this a little bigger, I can go here. I just grab this video, click and hold, and I drag this over to the video editor that I'm using. That's basically how I make it. Now, if you want to export this from here, you can go to the file option here, click that file button there, and it's going to export that to the folder that you specified earlier. You can do some editing in their actual in-house editor on Elgato, but I highly recommend you getting something else because the feature sets are very, very limited. That's kind of my opinion on that. So again, that's how you record, that's how you edit, that's how you export within the Elgato Game Capture software. If you have any questions about utilizing the software further that I did not answer in the tutorial, please feel free to put those in the comment section below. I will get to those as quickly as possible. If you want to see a streaming tutorial on how to use this within OBS, within Streamlabs OBS, please put that in the comment section below. I do like to get a good uh, barometer of where people are if they're interested in a video before I actually put the time and effort in researching and making sure I lay it out step by step. Thank you guys, as always, for watching my videos, and I will see you guys in the next one.